Today in DC electrical circuits, we're looking at lab number seven, series parallel DC circuits. And the objective, this exercise will involve the analysis of basic series parallel DC circuits with resistors. The use of simple series only and parallel only sub circuits is examined as one technique to solve for desired currents and voltages. Reference sections, Chapter 4, Direct Current Series Circuits, Chapter 5, Direct Current Parallel Circuits, and Chapter 7, Kirchhoff's Laws, Kirchhoff's Voltage Law and Kirchhoff's Current Law. The theory overview is brief because we've already covered direct current series circuits and parallel circuits, and this is just combining them together. The equipment we're going to be using today the adjustable DC power supply, which is the Agilent E3630A, digital multimeter, which is the Mastec MSM9803, and we have uh, four resistors, the 1K, the 2.2K, the 4.7K, and the 6.8K ohm resistor, and I've given you some little pictures here with the colors on them as well as what the uh, color bands are on the resistors. We're going to be building two circuits today, so we have the schematic of figure 7.1, and in multi-sim I've done a small simulation just so we can get an idea of what the voltages and currents are so we can compare these when we do our calculations. The second circuit that we're wiring up today is figure 7.2, and you can see we have a series portion that's in parallel with R1. And once again, I've done a simulation for you showing you what the expected value should be. So under procedure, step one, we're going to use the ohmmeter to check the values of our resistors and record these values under equipment just to make sure that we have the right components before we start hooking up our circuit. So my 1K ohm resistor is 996 ohms. My 2.2K ohm resistor is 2.183K ohms. My 4.7K ohm resistor is 4.6K ohms. And my 6.8K ohm resistor is 6.83K ohms. So under equipment, I have recorded the model numbers of the equipment I'm using. I didn't bother with the serial numbers. They're a little too hard to find. They're at the bottom of the equipment stack. And I've measured all my resistors to make sure I have the right ones and that they are within tolerance. So under procedure, step number two, the first thing we're going to do is determine the uh, total resistance of the circuit. So here's the circuit of figure 7-1, and the first thing I've done is put in the voltage we're going to be using and the values of the resistors. So the next thing I'm going to do is calculate the total resistance of the circuit. So looking at my circuit, I can see I have one resistor in series with two resistors in parallel. So the first thing I'm going to do is solve for my equivalent resistance of these two resistors in parallel. So R2 in parallel with R3, which ends up being 1.5K ohms. Now we know it had to be less than 2.2K because when two resistors are in parallel the result is always going to be less than the smallest resistor in parallel. So it has to be smaller than 2.2K and 1.5K seems to be in the ballpark. So the next step is to add R1 to R2 and R3 that are in parallel. So the equation being RT is equal to 1K plus 1.5K equals 2.5K ohms. So the equivalent resistor for this circuit is 2.5K ohms. Continuing on in step two under procedure, the next thing we're going to do is determine the theoretical voltages at point A, B, and C with respect to ground, and then we're going to record those in table 7.1. So to calculate VR1, 
So that's the voltage across resistor 1. I use the voltage divider rule. So I used VR1 is equal to 1K divided by the total resistance of 2.5K times the applied voltage of 10 volts, and that equals 4.0 volts. The voltage across R2 is the same as the voltage across R3. But remember, this is a parallel circuit, so I have to take the equivalent resistance of both resistors in parallel. So for the voltage across R2 or the voltage across R3, it's going to be equal to 1.5K, the resistance of the two resistors in parallel, divided by the total resistance of the circuit times 10 volts, and that equals 6 volts. So now they want to know what the voltage is going to be at point A. So the voltage at point A with respect to ground is going to be the applied 10 volts. The voltage at point B with respect to ground is going to be equal to the voltage drop across R2, which we calculated to be 6 volts. And the voltage at point C is the same as the voltage at point B, also 6 volts. So in table 7-1, I've recorded VA is 10 volts, VB is 6 volts, VC is 6 volts, and my total resistance is 2.5K ohms. So continuing on in procedure, step 2, the next part is to construct the circuit without the power supply connected. Set the DMM to read ohms and apply it to the circuit from point A to ground and record this resistance reading in table 7-1. So I just wanted to come back to figure 7-1 again. Uh, this is the circuit we're going to build and if you can orient your components the same way that they're shown in the schematic it makes it a lot easier for you to relate what's going on in the schematic to what's going on on your circuit. So I just wanted to show you how I wired up my circuit. This is my 1K ohm resistor. This is the 2.2K ohm resistor. And this is the 4.7K ohm resistor. Looking at the connections, you can see power comes in and makes contact in this little bus line here with my 1K ohm resistor. The other leg of the 1K ohm resistor comes into this bus line that goes all the way along here. So that makes connections with resistor number 2 and resistor number 3. The bottom of my two resistors goes in another long bus line that goes back to the common of the power supply. I find it a lot easier to orient which resistor is which when I wire it up the same way as they have it in the schematic. So you can see the total resistance of my circuit is 2.477k ohms. And we expected it to be 2.5k ohms, so I know that I've wired up my circuit correctly. So I've rounded my resistance reading up by one digit and recorded 2.48k ohms. And since it's close enough to 2.5k ohms, I know I've wired my circuit up correctly. So finishing off step two under procedure, we're going to connect the power supply, set the DMM to read voltage, and we're going to record the voltages at point A, B, and C and record these in table 7.1. So referring back to figure 7.1, in the schematic we can see that point A is the voltage coming out of the power supply. Point B is where the 1K ohm resistor meets with the 2.2K ohm resistor. And point C is also where the 1K ohm resistor meets with R3, the 4.7K ohm resistor. So I have my circuit hooked up to the power supply and you can see the reading on the power supply is 10 volts. 
So the black lead from my voltmeter goes to the common of the power supply. The red lead of my voltmeter is going to go to point A. And point A is where the power comes in and goes into the 1K ohm resistor. And I'm reading 10.01 volts. 10.01 volts. Point B is on top of R2, or the 2.2K ohm resistor, and I'm reading 5.98 volts. 5.98 volts. Point C is on top of R3, which is the 4.7K ohm resistor, and I'm reading 5.98 volts. 5.98 volts. So in table 7.1, I've recorded my readings. I'll leave you to calculate percent deviation. So under procedure, step 3, we're going to be applying Kirchhoff's current law to the uh, parallel subnetwork and the current entering node B. That's the uh, current through R1. So it should equal the sum of the currents flowing through R2 and R3. Okay, so these currents may be determined through Ohm's law and or the current divider rule. So we need to compute these currents and record them in table 7.2. And then we're going to set up our DMM as an ammeter, measure the three currents, and record the values along with the deviations in table 7.2. So we know what the voltage drop across R1 is going to be because we calculated it earlier. So the voltage across resistor 1 is equal to 4 volts. So using Ohm's law, V equals IR and I equals V divided by R, the current IT is equal to the current I1. So the total current coming in the circuit goes through the first resistor. So that is IT. That is also current number one. So it's equal to the voltage across resistor one divided by the resistance of resistor one. In this case, it's four volts divided by one K ohms. So that's equal to four milliamps. So once you've figured out IT is equal to four milliamps, you can use the current divider rule to figure out what the current through R2 and R3 is. Remember the rule states the current you want is equal to the resistor you don't want over the total of the two resistors times the total current. So I2 is equal to the 4.7k divided by the 2.2 plus 4.7k times 4 milliamps which equals 2.725 milliamps. And current 3, I3, is equal to resistor 2 over resistor 2 plus resistor 3 times IT. In this case, it's equal to 2.2K divided by 2.2 plus 4.7K times the 4 milliamps, which equals 1.275 milliamps. So filling out table 7.2, we can see that in theory, the current going through R1 is the total current going through the circuit of 4 milliamps. Then the current going through R2 and R3, we figured out using the current divider rule. To measure IT, the red lead of the ammeter connects to the wire that's coming in from the power supply. Now I've disconnected that wire from resistor number one. So the black lead of the ammeter connects to resistor number one, making the circuit. So every time you take a current reading, you have to break the circuit. And then you remake the circuit through the ammeter. So the current going through resistor 1, or the total current going into my circuit, is 4.01 milliamps. To take the next current reading, you have to put your circuit back together again. So the red lead that's coming from my power supply has to go back to the 1K ohm resistor. Now what I've done is I've taken resistor number 2, the 2.2K ohm resistor, 
I took it out of that bus line I was using and moved it over to an unused bus line. So that was the break in my circuit. I now have the red lead from the ammeter going to one end of my 1k ohm resistor that is going into the bus line. The black lead of the ammeter goes to the 2.2k ohm resistor leg that I've taken out of that bus line. The reading is 2.72 milliamps on the 40 milliamp range. If I move down to the 4 milliamp range, you can see my reading is a more accurate reading of 2.650 milliamps. To take my next current reading through R3, I've put R2 back into the bus line where it makes contact with R1. And I've taken R3 out of the bus line. So the red lead of my ammeter goes to R2, which is in the bus with R1. The black lead of my ammeter goes to resistor number 3, which I've pulled out of the bus line. So that was the break in my circuit, and then my ammeter makes the circuit. So the current going through R3 on the 4 milliamp range is 1.273 milliamps. So I've recorded my results in table 7.2 under measured and as you can see the results are similar to those that we had calculated previously. So under procedure number four we're to consider the circuit of figure 7.2. R2, R3, and R4 create a series sub network. So you can see in figure 7.2 R2, R3, and R4 make a series subcircuit. It says this subnetwork is in parallel with R1. So looking at figure 7.2 we can see R2, R3, and R4 are in series and these are in parallel with R1. It goes on to say that by observation then the voltages at nodes A, B, and C should be identical as in any parallel circuit of similar construction. Due to the series connection the same current flows through R2, R3, and R4. Further, the voltages across R2, R3, and R4 should sum up to the voltage at node C as in any similarly constructed series network. Then finally, via Kirchhoff's current law, the current exiting the source must equal the sum of the currents entering R1 and R2. Under procedure, step number five, we're to build the circuit of figure 7.2 with R1 equal to 1K, R2 equal to 2.2K, R3 equal to 4.7K, and R4 equal to 6.8K. Now we're to build this without the power supply connected, and we're going to calculate the total circuit resistance and record it in table 7.3. Then we're going to set the DMM to read ohms and apply it to the circuit from point A to ground and record this resistance reading in table 7.3. So this is to make sure that we've wired up the circuit correctly. So looking at the circuit, R1 is equal to 1K, R2 is 2.2K, R3 is 4.7K, and R4 is 6.8K. So the series branch, which I've labeled RS, is equal to R2 plus R3 plus R4. 
So that's equal to the 2.2k plus the 4.7k plus the 6.8k. So that equals 13.7k ohms. So to find RT, we take R1 in parallel with RS, and that's equal to 1k times 13.7k divided by 1k plus 13.7k. And that works out to 931. 0.973 ohms. So in table 7.3, under theory, total resistance, I've recorded 931.973 ohms. So my next step is to take the ohm meter and hook it up between point A and ground, and that's without the power supply connected, and that will give me the total resistance of my circuit. So I have my circuit set up on my trainer. You can see that the power from the power supply is going to travel through the red lead and continue on through this bus. So the first item I have hooked up to this bus is R1, which is the 1K ohm resistor. The second item hooked up to the bus is R2, which is 2.2K. Now R2 is in series with R3, and R3 is 4.7K, which is in series with R4, which is 6.8K. R4 comes back and joins R1, so that R1 is in parallel with R2, R3, and R4. And the return line to the common of the power supply is black, and it goes into this bus that makes contact with R1 and R4. And with the DMM set to ohms, so I hook up the red banana lead from the ohm meter to the red wire, and that is point A, and the black lead from the ohm meter to the black lead that went to my circuit. So hooking up the ohm meter to my circuit you can see I'm getting a reading of 926 ohms. So in table 7.3 under the measured column for total resistance I record 926 ohms. So to continue on under procedure step number 5 it says, using the series and parallel relations noted in step 3, calculate the voltages at points B, C, D, and E. So the applied voltage is going to be 15 volts, and the voltage at point A, B, and C are each going to be equal, and they're going to be equal to the 15 volts applied to the circuit. To find the voltages at point E and point D, we're going to use the voltage divider law. So for the voltage at point E, it's going to be equal to R4 over the total of the series resistance part of the circuit times the voltage at point C, which is 15 volts. So in this case, it's equal to 6.8K divided by 13.7K times the 15 volts at point C, and that equals 7.45 volts. Now the voltage at point D is going to be equal to the ratio of R3 plus R4 over the total resistance of the series circuit times the voltage at point C. So in this case, it's R3 plus R4 over RS times VC. And that's equal to 4.7K plus 6.8K divided by 13.7K times 15. And that works out to 12.59 volts. So in table 7.3, you can see I've recorded under theory column VB is 15 volts, VC is 15 volts, VD is 12.59 volts, 
and VE is 7.45 volts. There was no point in going to more decimal places in my calculation because the meter is only going to give us a maximum of two decimal places. Now we're to connect the power supply with E equal to 15 volts and measure these potentials with the DMM. We then determine the deviations and record all these values in table 7.3. So I've got the black banana lead going to the common of the supply and it comes over here and goes to my green binding post which goes to the black wire which is the common that runs throughout my circuit. The plus 20 volt terminal is connected to the red banana lead that is connected to the orange binding post on my trainer and goes to the red lead to represent the positive supply going into my circuit. Now using the plus 20 volt adjustment knob on the power supply you can see that my meter reading with the plus 20 volt meter button pressed in is reading 15 volts. So with the DMM set to DC volts that's the V symbol with the little flat line beside it. I have the black lead going into common and piggybacking the banana lead that comes from the power supply common. The red banana lead goes into the red hole labeled volts, ohms, capacitance, and hertz. And that piggybacks into the red lead coming from my power supply. So even though I have the power supply set to 15 volts, you can see the reading on my digital multimeter is actually 14.84 volts. So to take the voltage readings, what we're going to do is we're going to leave the black lead from the digital multimeter connected to the black lead of the power supply. And we're going to disconnect the red lead of the multimeter and move it around our circuit. So taking the red lead and putting it at the top of R1, this is point B. The voltage at point B is 14.97 volts. Moving the red banana lead from the top of R1 to the top of R2, this is VC. And on our digital multimeter, VC is 14.97 volts. So moving our red banana lead from the top of R2 to the bottom of R2, where it meets R3, this is point D. And the reading on our digital multimeter is 12.52 volts. So moving our red banana lead from point D, we're going to move it down to the bottom of R3, where it joins R4, and this is point E. So looking at the display on our digital multimeter, we can see the voltage at point E is 7.44 volts. So on table 7.3, I've recorded my measured readings for VB as 14.97 volts, VC is 14.97 volts, VD is 12.52 volts, and VE is 7.44 volts. I'm going to leave you to calculate the percent deviation. Now under procedure, step number six, we're to calculate the currents leaving the source and flowing through R1 and R2. We're to record these values in table 7.4. Then using the DMM as an ammeter, we're to measure those currents, compute the deviations, and record the results in table 7.4. So looking back at figure 7.2, the current flowing through R1 can be calculated using Ohm's law, V equals IR, rearranging I equals V divided by R, 
So that's going to be equal to VB, and VB is the voltage drop across R1. Keep in mind, one end is B, the other end is the common. So the voltage drop across R1 is equal to voltage at point B. So in this case, it's equal to the 15 volts divided by the 1K of R1, and that works out to 15 milliamps. Now the current through R2 is the same as the current through R3 is the same as the current through R4. So it's the current through this series branch. So the easiest way to calculate the current going through the series branch is to take the voltage at point C and divide it by the total resistance of the branch. And we calculated earlier that the resistance of the series branch is 13.7K. So the current through R2, which is labeled I2, is equal to VC divided by RS which is 15 volts divided by the 13.7K, and that works out to 1.095 milliamps. Now, to find IT, you can add I1 plus I2, right? The total current in the circuit is equal to the current flowing through R1 plus the current flowing through R2. Or you can calculate IT as being equal to E, which is the 15 volts, divided by RT, which we calculated to be 931.973 ohms. Either method should work out to 16.095 milliamps. So on table 7.4, under theory, I've recorded the source current as 16.095 milliamps, R1 as 15 milliamps, and R2 as 1.095 milliamps. So continuing on under procedure step number six, we're going to be using the DMM as an ammeter. We're going to measure those same currents compute the deviations, and record the results in table 7.4. So set up your digital multimeter as an ammeter by rotating the large knob till it says 40 milliamps and moving the red lead from the volt ohm capacitance and hertz checker connection over into the red milliamp hole. Over on my trainer, I've pulled the red lead out of the bus that was going to the top of R1 and R2 and place the red banana lead going to the ammeter on the end of the wire using an alligator clip. The black wire coming from the ammeter is connected through an alligator clip to the top of R1 or the top of R2 because they're both in the same bus. And you can see the current reading for the source, or IT, is 16.15 milliamps. To measure the current flowing through R1, I've disconnected R1 from the bus line that connected it to R2, and I've replaced the input voltage going to that bus. So now that my red lead from the ammeter can connect to the input voltage and the black lead of the ammeter connects to the top of R1 which I've pulled out of that bus line. So the display on my digital multimeter is reading 15.15 milliamps. I've now reconnected resistor number one back to the bus that's connected to the input from the power supply. And I've now disconnected resistor number two from that bus and moved it to an unused position. So the red lead for the ammeter now connects to the voltage coming in from the power supply. And the black lead connects to resistor number two 
and you can see it's actually disconnected from that power bus. Now you'll notice on my digital multimeter I've changed the range setting from the 40 milliamp down to the 4 milliamp range and I'm getting a current reading of 1.089 milliamps. So on table 7.4 under the measured column I've recorded I source as 16.15 milliamps. The current flowing through R1 or I1 is 15.15 milliamps and the current flowing through R2 or I2 as 1.089 milliamps. Once again I'm going to leave you to calculate the percent deviation. On the last page of the lab there are four questions for you to answer and hand in. So when you've completed the lab, leave your circuit set up on your trainer so your instructor can verify that it is working and then they will initial your lab to indicate that it is complete. Mm -hmm.